In a fast-paced world, many of us struggle with overthinking and worry that leaves us feeling overwhelmed or stuck. In this podcast, we will hear stories of successful individuals and have conversations and ways to reach our true potential by embracing every micro detail of our identity, especially the flaws that make us unique. This is your host, Maria Grace Wolk. I'm a Filipino-American entrepreneur, psychotherapist, and mom of two boys. And my mission is to amplify diverse perspectives and experiences and inspire your journey to wellness and fulfillment. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to introduce to you my guest today, Jonelle Sood. Jonelle is Native Hawaiian and she's here today to shed light on how higher education is not a common practice nor considered a necessity in her family and within the Hawaiian and Polynesian community. And throughout her career life, she did not see a big presence of Hawaiian natives nor Polynesians in the workplace. So she made it her long-term goal to provide a means for Polynesians to attain higher education and to support active members in the Pacific Islander community to further sustain the culture and sense of pride. And this is how Ho'omau Foundation began. I can't wait for you guys to hear her story, so let's dive right in. Ho'omau Foundation is a nonprofit we launched in 2020 focused on the success and development of Pacific Islanders. And what we do is we provide scholarships to Pacific Islanders that are active in the Pacific Islander community, attending a two or four year college. We will provide them with a mentor to help them with the transition through college and just to make sure everything's going, you know, well, and they have a, we're building their contact, their contacts, their professional network there. And then they're also building with them our professional network. So they'll have contacts with a community of some similarity of like-mindedness. And from my personal experience, that's why our three pillars are focused on education, perpetuation of culture, and networking, just because all of those are very important to my story, what I've gone through, and that we want to continue to showcase individuals in this environment and they're back in their community so other children can look up to them or see that, you know, things are possible for them. That sounds like a truly remarkable program, Jonelle. So tell us, where did it all start? Yeah, I grew up in the Bay Area, San Leandro area, and uh, played soccer. I've been playing soccer since I was about four and a half years old. And then I started out playing with my brother and his, his teammates. So he's four years older than me. So those were, you know, that was kind of my... My brother was my hero. He was everything. I, I wanted to do everything he was doing. So I was I would be out there playing soccer with them. I played soccer year round. So on club and then the travel team. And then when I was in high school, I played high school all the way up until my adulthood. Recently, I would say the last oh, cool. five or six years, I've stopped. I tore my calf muscle playing soccer. And so, but I still, those girls that I played with since I was 15, they're still my girls. I still, we still see each other, hang out. We go on hikes. We, you know. We go away for weekends. We do a lot of fun stuff. So those are very formative years for me and friendships that have, you know, will last a lifetime for sure. It's friendships that turns to family. And speaking of families, how do you help your kids learn more about their culture, your roots? You know, since my kids were little, every time we go back home, I always make sure that there's a, it's not just going and beach you know, we're obviously there. We, we visit family. We're connecting with the, with the Aina, but we're always doing something that's some cultural connection. So we're, I just feel like that's pretty important for, for them and for me. As parents, I think it is really important for us to guide them by doing exactly what you're doing, right? Immersing them in the culture during your, you know, visits home because parents do, they, we play a crucial, a crucial role on helping our children know their roots which will help them develop their own identity. I think we're very fortunate to have the parents that we have. They, you know, they didn't go to college and they were, you know, able to take care of us and, you know, be very successful. My mom and dad opened a flower that, you know, I remember starting that in our garage, you know, we were bunching up flowers and that was, that was really fun. Cause that's, 
it's hard work. It's labor. You're getting up at 2.30 a.m. to go to the flower market. I've always worked there. Even when I had a, you know, like a permanent job, I, the holidays, I always went back and helped my dad out, you know, and it was, it was really fun. I had learned how to read a map that was on paper. You know, we didn't have GPS or anything like that. And I was a runner for delivering flowers and getting signatures. And then I was a drive delivery driver. So, you know, just kind of running the whole, you know, just having that whole exposure to it. But just going to college just really wasn't wasn't a thing. It was you graduate high school and you go work and you start contributing. And my brother ended up going to college for football. So that was his point of entry was was football. And and I remember I'm in my senior year and it's I don't know what I'm just going to graduate. That was my plan. And my brother pulled me aside and he was like, you got to go to college. And I was like, why? I mean, I think I'm just working at the flower shop, right? And he's like, no, you got to go to college. He's like, this isn't it. High school isn't it. It's college. And then I remember turning to my mom and saying, how come you don't talk to me about college? And she was like, what, you want to go to college? So we drove around to all the, you know, JCs, the junior colleges in the area. And I was going to play soccer for Las Positas slash Chabot. And, and that's kind of how I got started. I wasn't focused. I didn't have a mentor. I wasn't, didn't have somebody helping me or pushing me along. This was new for, for me, for my family. I was pregnant with my son and that just everything in my head clicked. Everything in my head clicked. I got to finish college. I need to create a career for myself and to be able to provide for my son. So that's what happened. So here I am pregnant, going to college. At that point, I had a plan. And, and that's really what, what started it all for me. But on one of his baby pictures, I have a, a index card written behind it. In, in five years, these are all the things I want to do. For, for us. That's really where things started to click. And I, my degree is in sociology. I really wanted to go out and save the world, knowing and seeing that there, you know, part of my struggle was I didn't really have a mentor. I didn't really see people that looked like me or that I could look up to or even go to for advice. And then directly impacted by my network, the people that I've worked with, that I've able to connect with, and, you know, just the, the power of your network. Those are the elements that really drove me to create Ho'omau. And then the, the piece of the perpetuation, that's part of what we want to do. So we don't want you to go to college and, and forget your culture, your roots, you're living out of state or you're out of state already like me. I don't live on the island. We want you to stay stay connected to continue to perpetuate so others in your community can see you, can see what you're doing and have something to drive towards because they see it themselves. It's not foreign. You know, when we think of Ho'omau Foundation, which Ho'omau means perpetuation, uh, mm -hmm. persevere. And that's really what we're all about. That's really what all of our board members have. We all have a very we have a story to share. And so we know what that perseverance means. My cousin, Noelani, you know, was telling her about my non nonprofit and what I wanted to do and what I want, wanted us to stand for. And I asked her to think of some names. And so she came back and this one just kept coming back to her. And so she presented me with three to four names and, I was, and that one just, it stuck. And I didn't know what it meant at that point. And then she told me, and I was like, oh, it's perfect. This is of course, we're Ho'omau Foundation. <laughs> so there's a lot of meaning behind everything that we do, even starting with our name and the values that we bring and our pillars of Ho'omau, which we're focused on education, perpetuation, and professional networking. I, I want to repeat this because I feel like these are solid pillars for a foundation to be built upon. So you mentioned education, preservation of the culture, and connection with the community. I'm wondering, what was the defining moment that led you into creating this program? I feel like I might shed a couple of tears on this one. The defining moment for me was when my dad passed away. My dad passed away unexpectedly. I mean, literally unexpectedly. He was on his way to walk into the giant stadium to go watch a Giants game. Very unexpectedly, no heads up. And, you know, that that was probably my defining moment, really taking stock of life, doing an inventory of what I'm doing as a human being, how I'm contributing to my community, my world, the space around me, to my family, to myself. It's, it was very clear to me that life is very short and at any moment, anything could happen. 
And so when you, when something like that happens, you just have a different lens you're looking through. You have a different new set of eyes. And so I would say that was the defining moment where I, not right away, but I was taking stock of my life, but that was really where it's kind of like, how am I spending my time on this earth? There's this really cool poem out there. It's called The Dash. It's really beautiful. I love it. I highly recommend it. And I heard, and I heard about it when I attended one of my junior high friends funeral. And it has really stuck with me since then. It talks, you know, it really talks about somebody's passing and all the great things someone says about them. And when you look at their, their headstone, it has the year that they were born and the year that they died, but no one talks about what happened in the middle that dash. Mm -hmm. So, so that was really kind of me evaluating, how am I spending my time on this earth? Am I really doing the things that I really want to do traveling seeing the places I want to see, being with my family, you know, doing all the things I really want to do, giving back to my community, the area that, you know, the space that I live in. And uh, prior to that, probably for about 10 years prior to that. So we're only two years old. We just celebrate our two year anniversary. So I would say, you know, about 12 years ago, because I was in high tech and I was looking at had access to diversity and diversity pipeline and information like that. I just really noticed again, here I am in another situation where I'm not engaging with a lot of people that look like me or have similar culture. And that goes back to, I'm born and raised in California, going to school, you know, again, I'm not around seeing engaging with a lot of people that look like me, they're in professions where I could see myself being there. It just looked like that. Just, yeah. yeah. It just looked like some of those things weren't for me, you know, and then, and then here I am in my professional workspace. So I noticed that and I always wanted to, how can, what, how, how can I do, what can I do to, to change these numbers? What can I do? How can I contribute? And, you know, you really think you can't contribute. It seems like, how do I, who am I? What am I going to do? How can I really contribute? So you just really don't know that you have a position or an opportunity. A year before my dad passed away, I'm going to, I'm going to plug him because he's a, he's an awesome guy, but I was at, I was at PIFA because my little niece was performing. And so, you know, had to go Get, go represent and show up for her. But I was walking around and I, I met American Samoan artists who had lovely, lovely pieces of art, a lot of Pacific Islander art and loved his work. And he actually did a custom piece for me to represent my family. But I actually was telling him, this is, I was actually telling him about what I want to do about this nonprofit that was in my mind, how I think I don't, you know, who am I? What do I have to do? But I feel like I want to do something. And this is my way forward. This is how I think I can do it because education opens doors. I really believe that we should perpetuate our culture for ourselves, but are the future generations and really showing people in our community, you know, it's possible. And then the third is professional networking because I know that it works. The power of your network is a real thing. He was the first person I talked to about it outside of my family and said, yeah, I will, that, that's great. If there's anything I can do for you, I want to help. And so that conversation happened in 2017. My dad passes away in 2018, 2020, we launched Ho'omau Foundation. So that was, that was the kind of pivotal moment for me. Wow, such an inspiring story, Janelle. And thank you so much for sharing. Would you say that there was some type of theme that kind of played out in the process of your journey that really stands out to you? I think people are really kind in general. And, and I think they want to see you succeed. They want to help you get there. And I think that's the general theme that I've seen. And so having that, having a little bit of that comfort goes a long way. You might not be for everybody. Not everyone might not everyone's going to connect with you. Not everyone's going to be behind that because it doesn't resonate with them. But for the most part, what I've seen is even if it doesn't resonate with them, they want to see you genuine, genuinely succeed and be happy and, and give you ideas. I, you know, I love asking people for feedback and ideas, even if it's, it's not the best, it's where you can learn. So, and that's hard to, to hear too. Not everybody wants to hear it, but I always love asking, okay, what's working? What's not working? What can I do better? 
And, and that's why we're, we're able to make some of the changes and do s- different things at the nonprofit and in my personal life, because I, I can ask for that. I feel comfortable asking for that, but I also have comfort knowing that in general, people are very nice and want to help you. I think that's beautiful because I do agree. I think everyone is generally good, but sometimes experiences can make them see the world from a different perspective you know, something like trauma, and then their behavior changes accordingly to be able to survive. I just have kind of like a philosophy on, on life. Okay. Do you want to know what that is? Yes. And it's probably a hodgepodge of everything and everybody that has influenced me in kind of shaping the way I think and feel, but I do think everyone deserves to be, to be happy in their life and their work and be fulfilled. So that translates differently for everybody, but it's important to find those things and those moments that really energize you and, and go for it. Cause I do, I do believe everyone should be happy with their dash with their time on this earth. Love that. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's a great place to, to kind of sign off, but I will be looking for that dash poem and I'll share it <laughs> as well. Because that one's powerful. And I think your story is very inspiring and I have Appreciate your time with me and for sharing it with our listeners. So Janelle, tell us how, how we can find you. We're at ho'omaofoundation.org. We have Facebook. We have a YouTube channel. We have Twitter, LinkedIn. We even have a TikTok channel. So that you can find us out there. You can get a hold of me directly at Janelle at ho'omaofoundation.org. Our scholarships are for Pacific Islanders that are active in the Pacific Islander community that are going to a two or four year college. We'll provide them with a mentor to help with that transition to college, you know, make sure that they have everything that they're needing, they're filling, but they have somebody to talk to you. And we're part of their professional network. We're building a professional network with them. So they'll have like-minded individuals that they can network with. And as long as the student is located in the U.S. and going to the U.S., they're all eligible. So it's not just from people that are from Hawaii. It's if you're Pacific Islander and active in the Pacific Islander community. Our application, we are now accepting applications for the school year 2022 to 2023. Our application is open until April 16th, which happens to be my dad's birthday. So there's a common theme here that a lot of this is driven by my dad (laughs) and the scholarships itself are in my dad's name, the Camry Lee Jr. Scholarships. And once again, Janelle, thank you for being here. I truly, truly appreciate your time. And this is such an amazing foundation. So what I'll do is I'll have your contact information in the show notes. If any listeners would like to reach out to you, if you have any questions for Janelle, or if you would like to donate, you can visit her website and you will, you can find those information on my show notes. So again, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for your time today. If you resonate with this podcast, please be sure to hit subscribe, rate, and review. I would so appreciate it. The high rate and reviews will help others find the podcast so we can amplify, normalize, and break the mental health stigma. Till next time, stay kind and own your journey. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host nor the guest are providing legal, mental health, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one. This podcast does not substitute for personal professional services.